Okay, what's up guys? This is Dark Blue. Maybe you have experienced something like this. The gears you have always been using got nerfed after an update. Will you be annoyed or will you go searching for a more powerful gear after patch right away? Do you like developers adjusting gear balancing all the time, making your raw gears less useful? Here in this video, I shall share my thoughts upon these questions with you. So remember to like and subscribe, and let's begin. Though these problems may occur in many different game genres, I want to focus on looter games. So what's the most fun part of a looter game? You set a build you want to try as your goal and grind all necessary gears to make this build, and finally put it into actual use to see if it's as powerful and interesting as expected. After all of this, you can move on to next build. So it's clear that to keep this fun lasting, there need to be as many different playable builds as possible. But game content is always limited, so many looter games adopt a live survey style. Every few weeks, there will be a new season and some new content for players to grind. This is a common way to keep a looter game alive. But there's another problem. With these new contents, players may not want to grind them. This is because usefulness is one of the considerations when it comes to whether you should grind a new build. More powerful a build is, the more players want to grind their gears. So new contents should be stronger than previous gears, otherwise this update will be meaningless for most folks. Well, making new gears stronger roughly equals to nerfing old gears let alone sometimes while well, developers really nerf them. So you can see, it's natural for your old gears to get nerfed. However, this may not be the only solution. If new builds can be interesting or provide really novel experience, players may want to grind them even if they are not strong. This is a solution without nerfing previous gears. And I've heard Destiny 2 is doing a good job. But I haven't played it and confirmed this claim. Though this may be a better solution, it's really demanding and most developer teams still choose the old fashioned way. Adjusting gear balancing all the time, nerfing old gears to make sure players always have some new gears to grind. And I have played two games adopting this philosophy, Borderlands and Grim Dawn. Borderlands achieve its purpose in two ways. The first is rebalancing gears through hotfixes. Sometimes hotfixes can happen every week. And with each one there will emerge a new god tier gear, also making the last one a total rubbish. Since it's really hard to get a gold row in Borderlands, it's not even rare if you can't get anything useful before your original target gets nerfed. And the second is bringing in new content with DLC, adding new gears, and also lifting max level. In Borderlands, there's no way to level up an existing gear without cheating. So increasing max level means all your gears become totally useless, and you need to grind them all from the start. Personally, I think this is not very friendly to players. On one hand, it's hard to get any useful gears, and on the other, nerfing is too common. And I can see I'm not the only one with such opinions. Complaints can be found all across the community. But Grim Dawn, on the contrary, is much more traditional. If I don't make it run, there have been only a handful of content updates with DLCs, and most time, there is only rebalancing coming with patches. And this game updates at a much more rational frequency. Though new contents are important to revitalize a looter game, rebalancing can be helpful. With each adjustment, there will be new god tier builds for you to try out, so this is fine. But this is not where I want to put my emphasis. I want to say, though I haven't played Green Dawn much, I have paid some attention to its community. According to my experience with Borderlands, frequent rebalancing should bring some complaints. But this is not true in Grim Dawn community. Folks are just happy to discuss on new builds that become doable after patch. But why? Maybe the mainstream playstyles of these two games are different. In each Borderlands game, there are 4 or 6 playable characters or classes, 
and the story missions cost a lot of time and you need to play NG Plus and even NG Plus 2 to get to endgame. So it's really costly to max out a, one character. But when you have maxed out one, it will be easy to change from different views. Therefore, most players tend to max out each class only once. Afterwards, they can try different views with them. In Grim Dawn, however, there are 9 classes and each character is consisted of 2 classes. So choosing 2 out of 9 makes a lot of combinations. So the mainstream playstyle is starting a new character each time you want to try a new build. And transition builds before you get to endgame is also important. As you can see, starting a new character is really common in Grim Dawn community. So after each patch, this playstyle is not affected. Since folks don't care if their old characters get nerfed, they will start a new one anyway. But in Borderlands, folks hope to keep their characters at max level and hope their gears are always as strong as they once were. In short, they want a stable endgame experience. But with each hotfix, and even worse, with each DLC that lifts max level, this stable experience is broken. You need to do it all from the start, grinding levels and gears all again with nothing useful left. So you can see, these two games both adopt nerfing the old strategy, but they bring different experience to the community. And this means there's a lot that developers can do to make players feel better about nerfing. But there's always another option, no updates at all. And there's a game adopting this, Outriders. As far as I know, there have been only 1 to 2 free content updates and only 1 DLC. And only as few rebalancing as possible after each content update. Generally, there has been almost no update to this game. The Outriders adopt another strategy to keep players grinding, making it really difficult to max out a character. According to my experience, it's not too hard to get a build to work with almost perfect gears. But it's hard to grind to max level. Well, in late game, leveling up actually means only a minor increase to difficulty and drop rate, nothing more. So it's totally okay if you want to stay at a lower level forever, but at least there's always something out there for you to grind if you'd like. I want to say I feel really relaxed when playing Outriders. There's no update of either rebalancing or new contents to push me forward. I can keep on to my own pace and I don't have to worry about waking up one day finding my old gears have become rubbish. I grind when I want to grind and when I don't, I can be AFK for half a year and return to continue where I like left. Besides this, the four classes in Outriders truly provide various ways to play and each individual build is a different playstyle, so I like this game. This shows us it's also feasible to give up updating the looter game as long as there's already enough content for players to grind. So much being said, I'm not providing any suggestion for game developers but for us, players. As we have seen in this video, there are some different updating paradigms of looter games. Some do seasonal updating of new contents, some do rebalancing once in a while, and some give up updating, and this is also fine. Now we can choose looter games that suit our preference. For example, I like designing views, but I'm not a big fan for grinding, and I don't like my gears being nerfed. So I can choose games with no updates like Outriders or Borderlands when its updates are finally completed. If you haven't played looter games before but want to give it a try, these games can also be a good start. But for those core fans of looter games who always want to have something to grind, games with more frequent updates will be more suitable. And now, as a final conclusion, I'd like to say, by dividing looter games into more subgenres according to their updating pattern, we can better find games that suit our preference, and hope you can find more fun from games. 
Now, if you like my story and if you want to join me into depth of games, just like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you around.